Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. This is an interview that probably you have never heard anyone talk about Lyme disease before. I hadn't. I had certain friends who thought they had it, and it was a very complicated, but we were very fortunate to find Dr. Cass Ingram, who's author of The Lyme Disease Cure. He's calling in from Chicago, and I am so happy that you're going to talk to us about this, especially for people who go and go to the forests and the woods and places, and they have no yeah. idea. Yeah, that's right. Well, here's the situation. It's a total pandemic where there's a, the government admits that there's a half million new cases a year, and Lyme disease can kill you, and it can kill a 10-year-old. It can kill a 20-year-old. It can kill a big beast athlete. So that's a lot different than heart disease, which you would expect more as you age or diabetes. And uh, my predictions are that there's going to be a million and a half new cases this year. Mm. That's a tremendous problem. Yes. So, so somebody's got to talk about it. Therefore, our discussion on, on how you could prevent it, what the signs and symptoms are, it's a mimic. So you could have, I can tell you, 10 different diseases that are diagnosed not as Lyme, but they are Lyme. And if you don't catch it, it'll kill you. Well, the Super one great. thing that must be very important for you to write an entire book on, how did you first become so interested in this? Was it personal? Yes, I got contracted the miserable mm -hmm. thing when I was doing my research in the woods in, in Wisconsin. It put me in a wheelchair. You know, and I'm, I'm a tough, <laughs> active guy, and I couldn't figure out how I couldn't fight and defeat the thing. So I finally figured out how to destroy it in my system and how to get cured. So I had to write a book about it. Of course. And I weaved my story throughout the pages almost like a novel of what I went through, the suffering, the crutches, the inability to walk, the numbness, the paralysis, the lockjaw. It even gave me, I couldn't eat for two weeks. Oh. You know, my whole body was burning up. It was in my brain and spinal cord. A big pus came out of my spine. You know, it's 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 something you got to talk about uh, and and share. And fortunately, I know what it's all about. Well, tell me what besides you now. What kind of doctors did you go to? Uh, were they infectious? No, they couldn't help me. I was too late for antibiotics, really. Hmm. So my MD friends or what have you, osteopath friends, none of them could touch it. I had to come up with a cure by for myself. Now these are uh, these tick. These aren't the same ticks that get on dogs are they is that but those large ones well, although the dog tick might have a bit of lime it's this little teeny uh, so-called deer tick that's really a mouse and rat rodent tick and he's only the size of a poppy seed or the tip of a stick pin hmm. and you don't see him you don't feel him oh mm -hmm. well that's why and in, in what i received from you of course and you did a wonderful sheet on this, the preventing exposure to Lyme disease and tick pathogens, and then such precautions to include. My goodness, that, that was wonderful that you put that, you know, together so people can take the precaution. Yeah, you have the situation where you, you pull your pant, uh, or your socks over your pant legs, and then you're wearing light, instead of wearing shorts, you're wearing a long cotton pant these days. Shorts are out now. And, and we were talking about... Uh, you know, using that spray, the herbal, we call it Herbal Protect X. You've got to look that one up. And it's 99% effective for preventing ticks to come on. It's just herbs, herbal extracts. You spray that on the ankle and the, sh and the socks up to the knee, the leg. And you spray it on your exposed arms or skin or neck or what hair or what have you, you see. And, uh, and then... Uh, we talk about how you can strip your clothes off and check yourself and throw the clothes in a dryer in the book. I think mm. it's in there. Because the dryer will desiccate the ticks. Mm. And we talk about the dogs, too, that if you're not conscious of the dogs, they'll, br they'll bring the ticks to the house or to the backyard. Huh. Well, I was thinking of something else. I Years ago, because I'm into a lot of natural healing, the oil of wild oregano is a very, very important herb, if you want to call it an Well, herb. I just got an email from a guy who says that I, I, I recommended the Super Strength Edible Oil of Oregano, 
North American Urban Spice, the original. And he says, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The Lyme disease is like 80% better just from this. Right, but it's also good for a lot of other things, is what I was saying, the oil of wild oregano. I mean, it's wonderful that it helps with this. But I've, uh, I've heard some wonderful things about it as an herb. Well, yeah, you probably heard that it knocks out cold and flu. and Yes, bronchitis yes, I have. Congestion. And, of course, you can use it for staph and strep and MRSA, sore throat as well, tonsillitis. You can use it for sinusitis. You can either put it under the tongue or put it on a Q-tip and slip it up the nose. Uh, you can use it for diarrhea, irritable bowel, all that. You know. Yeah, but it, people, not too many people know about it, and I was glad that you even brought it up. And then uh, the other thing that... Um, that you that you really shared was the way that people uh, that that there is a mixture of what people think they have and and you said that it's not easily figured out. Well, it's a it's a it's a it's a fake. So so it comes in and by stealth, and then it invades the skin tissue, and you end up getting diagnosed with lupus or scleroderma. You see what I'm saying? And then it'll go inside the spinal cord and brain, and you end up with Lou Gehrig's or MS or Parkinson's or or Alzheimer's diagnosis. They got and you miss it, you miss it. So now the spirochete can continue to erode and corrode at the tissues because no one's treating it. And then it goes into the joint capsule, and you end up with the diagnosis of rheumatism and arthritis. And so it was missed. That's the danger. All right, so now there's not a shot for you to take. There's no uh, inoculation, no shot, right? There's no vaccine. Hmm. Antibiotics, maybe once in a while. Uh, therefore, the, the benefit of the wild oregano oil, super strength. And we also, and the protocol I, I always carry it with me is a regaresp. A what is that? A regaresp. Okay. RSP. It's a combination of oil of oregano with cinnamon. Clo- no, cinnamon, cumin, and sage. Now, I had a native, a, a native Mexican interrupt my lecture, and he said, Doctor, I have a point. He said, do you know the Longhorn? I said, tell me more. He said, we brought the Longhorn to Texas decades ago, and we know that when a pick bites a Longhorn, it dies. Huh. And I said, how much sagebrush does the, he says they eat a ton of sagebrush? Oh, that was it. <laughs> yeah. So there's, the sage is poisonous to the tick, you see? And, and that's in the oregano. So I always add, I say, take that and the oil of oregano as your minimum protocol. And, uh, and, 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 and Zhang and his group in Johns Hopkins showed that the oregano oil dissolves the Lyme bacteria, 100% dis, uh, destruction. But he also found that cinnamon oil does, and cumin, and they're in that oregano stuff. Yeah. Well, I use a lot of cinnamon, but not the oil of cinnamon. And I guess they're it's the oil. Yeah, that it's the oil exactly. Yeah. But um, I'm looking at this this picture, and it does seem so tiny. So you're saying that when you're bitten. It doesn't itch. Nothing happens. You don't nothing even happens. know. Once in know. a rare while, okay, one in three might get the bullseye rash. But that seems to be happening less commonly. And so most people are bitten by stealth, and they have no way to treat the local area because the tick injects an, an anesthetic oh. that numbs the area so that oh. it, no one can know he's there. Oh, my heavens. That's the intelligence that of the Amazing. Organ. Yeah. So, can, do you mind getting personal and tell us about your particular story and what happened? Well, I uh, was in the we- weeds in the bush for a week. Then Where was that? In Wisconsin. And then when I came home after a week, I thought I was going to die or something. So, so I couldn't walk on one side. I couldn't use my ankle. I couldn't put my arm through a shirt. I didn't even know what it was. I was burning up. Um, I had head pressure, so I was taking my head and pressing it against the wall, pressing my fists against my head, and I was going through all these bizarre. And so when I found the bullseye rash on my back, you know, Uh. and I said, oh, no, you, I said, this is the stupid, and I started kind of cussing and everything, and and not really, I don't cuss much, but, and then I started to say, I prayed, okay, it's, it's for a reason. God knows 
this is for a reason. I kept telling myself that. Otherwise, I'd have went crazy. Hmm. And then after 90 days of misery, I said, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you stupid lime. I don't have any life left. (laughs) So I got a bottle of the Oregoresp. I took half the bottle, 45 capsules. I took a whole bottle of the oil of oregano, entire bottle, and dumped it in a glass of water and drank it. Wow. And then 50 Oregamax and 120 gel caps. And you know what happened? No, what? I saved my own life. (gasps) Took a week, but at least I wasn't dying. That is some story. And then you know what's something else? It was still in my body. It Uh, took another year to clean it out. And and how did you clean it out with more I just went back on these high doses of about six things. It's in my book, The Basic Protocol, The Medium Protocol, The Major. They can go on the website. I don't want to buy anything. I don't want to buy your book. I don't want to buy nothing. That's fine. I don't know. It's a crazy world now. So you go look at the website. And you have free videos and free protocol in there and all that stuff. So you can go to CassIngram.com. You may be a skeptic. I appreciate that. Be skeptical, but at least investigate CassIngram.com. What's there to be skeptical about anyway? You're all rotten and dying with this stupid spiral key. Hmm. You've yes. got to do something to knock it out. It'll knock you out. Apparently. I'm sure you have friends that are ruined or they're dead now. Uh, gone on to the God, because this, the miserable biological spirochete Lyme disease destroyed their potential. Well, This I'm... is a crime against humanity that this is happening, that people in the prime of their lives have had been attacked. I've been there personally. So, so I have another question. So when this happened, did you have long pants and long shirt on or not? Yeah, I did that. You did? Yeah, I did somehow, but I, you know, I didn't use my herbal repellent those last two days, and I didn't wear my white zoot suit. Oh. I had all that, but I was wearing a special, uh, like you know, like a biological suit. Oh, because I was you knew... really deep in the woods, and you knew that it was dangerous when you did this. Right, and then the last two days, I haven't seen any ticks. It must be too late or something, and that's when they got me. Okay, but when you price. said you didn't see ticks, were you aware that they were like a pinpoint? Yeah, I was aware, but I talked myself out of it. I see. It's, that's how it happens. You make the slight. It's not like the old days. You could take a picnic and take the family and roll around on the grass and have fun. Um, kids are playing on swings and ropes and, you know, vines and messing around. Nobody ever got sick and died. And this, is no, not, this isn't no. contagious, is it, either? It's either yes, it's it, it is contagious. <gasps> Tell us about that. Now the danger zone, you have to do all these precautions. It's in my book, but but you have to be be treating your wife or your husband or your mate or whatever because you're going to get it. And why is that? How, how well, is it that? loves to live in the vaginal tract. And in oh, the, in the, in the I see. Semen. Oh. oh, my heavens. This, yeah. And, and, and does it keep reproducing itself? Is that? Oh, what? yeah. It's a slow reproducer, oh. and uh, you're going to get it. And uh, then, of course, blood transfusions. So we've got, you know, we can have all kinds of things. I just talked to a family in northern Wisconsin by Eagle River. There are 10 people in the family. Eight of them have been diagnosed by blood tests with Lyme disease. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that poor family. If, If you think that this is a minor issue that happens once in a while and that's being overblown by conspiracy theorists, I feel sorry for you. Yep. This is a hard core pandemic that is destroying the fabric of this civilization <laughs> and that is ruining the lives of people as we speak. Well, you've certainly convinced me after, I mean, I haven't read your book yet, but certainly after just the the information that you had on, that you sent me, it's... It is not something. Well, I, I'm going to interrupt myself because I want to ask you a question. Where, where did the word Lyme disease come from? L Y M. Old Lyme in Lyme, Connecticut, uh, which is nine miles as the wind blows from Plum Island. And God help us, the Rockefeller Institute with its criminal agents that it imported from Soviet and Nazi empires. Oh, really? Uh, with the CIA's help and more, invented ticks full of lime spirochetes and released them on the island at the same time oh. as it broke out in 
nine miles away. Really? Yes. It Is does. that in your book? Yes, it's in the book. And uh, I think Robert Carroll wrote Lab 245 or something. It's an excellent book by Harper Collins. But no matter. We've got to do something about it. Uh, we've got to attack this viral key. We've got to get that oregano and the oregano resp at the minimum. Uh, perhaps uh, adding in some oregano max and some juice of oregano would be excellent. And we've got to hunt this down. We could hunt it down over there by good old Al Foreman at Save a Lot Nutrition in Mar- and where is it Margate? Uh, he's a good guy right. and also Nutrition Smart. Oh, I see. Okay, so you yeah, you Tooney, use... and then Toonies is another one okay. he, over there in Coral Springs. All right. so between Toonies and uh, Save a Lot and Nutrition Smart, you can find the majority of these wholesome uh, items. Um, but uh, you see, you have to have the oregano P73, that type of oregano oil, because I'm talking about taking a half a bottle or a bottle a day or a third of a yes. bottle. Well, or... preposterous, but you said that I guess you need something powerful enough to get to get you to it. You have to have the power and you have to have the safety and the, the fact that it's, you, know, you can utilize it in high doses. Hmm. It's preposterous as all get out that it takes that much natural medicine or any other thing to shut this down because a cold, let's say you had a cold or a flu, then you take five drops of the oregano oil three times a day versus 500 drops a day for the Lyme, 1,000 drops a day, 2,000 drops. Uh, it's it's that craziness that I'm having to deal with. To help. And the people would be too sheepish to take those kinds of doses. Yes. Who's going to take 50 capsules a day of oregano oil or and 50 capsules of oregorasp and 40 capsules of oregamax. Who in God's name would do it unless they were under my care? Exactly, so to, and and people who are, are, could die. That you know you'll take do anything to prevent that's that. That's right. That's right. And I'm telling you, if you don't attack it and destroy it, you can end up with cardiac Lyme, drop dead from bundle branch block. You can end up with with MS and Lou Gehrig's and Parkinson's and either die a slow death or it'll just eat you up and, and quickly shut you down. Uh, it's happening. It's it's happening by the hundreds of thousands every year. Um, perhaps we've reached a few of those thousands to, to have them research our work. And I have plenty of videos uh, on castingham.com. You've got the book. You've got the money. I've got the book. We could make a marriage. <laughs> and uh, get the book, The Lyme Disease Cure. Uh-oh. And if you want something more general, The Cure is in the cupboard because it covers Lyme and 100 other things. You know. So. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about some other things. Now, of course, as a physician, and you, you have written many, many books, and, and um, you have certainly, you're so interested in all this. What other things besides, I know we're, we are going to try to get your, the name of your book out there, but what other kinds of things are as exciting as what you've just been, not exciting, but scary. Well, I, I think that the candida fungus thing has to be addressed more, and that's certainly a problem in Florida, and how we could have chronic lung or pneumonitis or bronchitis and sinusitis, asthma, chest congestion, um, irritable bowel, Crohn's disease. It could be fungal, and we don't even deal with it. So we could you know we could use the oregano oil and clear that stuff out, but we don't know. Um, the fact that that, for example, heart disease could be infectious, and that we could reduce the risk of heart attacks by just taking oregano oil. You know, so I want to I want to stay on that for a minute. So it comes in capsule capsule form. Yeah, it comes in capsule form. And if we and, were, if we were to take as a cardiovascular preventive a couple capsules a day. The fact that cancer seems to be related to fungus. Here again, the oregano oil coming in handy. You saw that research in in Long Island University where they were able to kill all traces of cancer cells in the prostate with oregano oil. So So, all these little factoids that have been researched extensively by the medical community, but that we're so busy worrying about whose tweet said what and what's, you know, and, of course, there are some real things like sex abuse and horrible things and um, people being abused. But we're, our whole life is directed with all that negative energy, and we don't have anybody telling us 
that that we have the candida pandemic. Yeah, well, that I have heart disease and strokes are infectious. You know yeah. that we have Lyme. Um, I just, you know, I, my big thing is. Why would you die prematurely if we could have prevented it? Right. Oh, I love having you uh, to talk to me and talk to all our audience on the radio. So um, just getting just getting back to all this, what is the oregano? Is this the oregano plant? And you're yeah, just it's using- a wild oregano, exactly. That, but is uh, it wild? Or is there, are there two kinds of plants, one wild? There's two. There's the farm-raised, which nine out of ten oregano oils on the market are now made from farm-raised. And then there's the more difficult, rarefied, 5,000 to 12,000 feet above sea level, wild oregano, which is really the one you want. You want the oil extracted from only the wild plant. And that one uh, is extremely powerful. It's a natural medicine, but it's still the true oregano. That's the original oregano that they used to grind up and put on the pizza and that type of thing. And I have an oregano plant, but that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. What you have is a marjoram plant mimicking oregano. Mm. Does it have purple flowers? Yes. That's marjoram. See, this <laughs> is the problem we're facing. People say, I didn't get any results or I got an upset stomach. What are you taking? Well, it ends up being something from a multi-level marketing company or natural factors or they're taking some other cheaper product, nature's answer. I don't know, whatever. I don't want to mention brands, but but they're taking the cheap farm-raised stuff. And this bother, you know, Gaia, I guess, too. Um, so... Um, for the, and I couldn't figure it out. I did 30 gas chromatographies. I thought somebody else would be smart. Only the North American Urban Spice is picking the wild stuff with the villagers. Every bottle that we we buy from them supports 260 village co-ops. Oh, wow. What a, and that's what I you cannot do? tell you. Those village co-ops, every time we buy farm-raised, we don't give them any, any benefit. You know, we support these combines and these big industries that are cloning the oregano and planting it with GMO uh, bacteria that they use to clone it, and all this is going on. So, you know, I got contacted by the federal government once. For what purpose? They wanted me to promote genetically engineered oregano and sage. Huh? They said, come on, at the end of the letter, I, I threw it yeah. away. I should have yeah. kept it. Right. It was an overnight package. Come on, Ingram. Get on board. Help us with the GMO oregano. Oh, my. Well, you know, I have not really met you before, but this is very fascinating. I, When you sent me that email, I said, I have to have him on the show and would like to have some sort of a relationship here with you with what we do. Have you ever heard of us before? Did well, you... I've heard of you. It would yeah. be nice if we could do something more yeah. regularly for your yeah. team down I'm gonna, there. I'm going to talk to you. I'll, I'm going to get back to you on it. Now, yeah. are you selling this yourself or you just promote it? I, I, you know, I'm a physician, so I can't right. really sell oregano oil too much. I maybe one day I'll make some formula up for spirochetes, but it's more the company that I endorse. I see. And also, I sell my books. Yeah. And I do have my own. I've just now invented my own supplement company oh. for things I find in the wilderness. Like, for instance, spruce extract, pine extract, ah. hawthorn extract. When I find the wild plant, yeah, no more the companies are too busy. They said, we are too busy. So I said, well, I'll put it on the market. So I'm starting my own. It's You can see it on my website. And uh, people have received those products well because they are 1,000% wild and raw. Hmm. Uh, but well, maybe one day we can talk about that. Yeah, I, I would look forward to doing that. But um, let's just get back to this. So when people want to buy these products... They have to go to the health food store. I would say try to support local first. Right. They can go to AmericanWildFoods.com. That's another idea. Uh, that that company endorses the proper oil of oregano, AmericanWildFoods.com. But if you go to Nutrition Smart and you go to Toonies and you go to uh, uh, people like Al Foreman down there uh, at Save a Lot. They know my work. They have me on the radio down that way. Mm. And, uh, and and for 20 years, I've worked with people like that. I so, see. So okay. Whole Foods even has the oregano. They have the cheaper stuff, but they do have the original one. Well, when you say the cheaper stuff, but is it the wild oregano? No, it's not wild. Oh. Our gas chromatography showed that if you're going to save the money, you get to get uh, you get to get the poor quality. Well, that's not good, isn't the whole point is... 
you want to get the best if you're going to take I it. I would say, well, first of all, you can't use those daily, the cheap stuff, you know. And uh, so you better stick with the wild one. That's all mm-hmm. I can tell uh, where, where it's did more you... money, it's more dear, but <laughs> right. it, that, look, you could take five drops a day. There's 800 drops in a bottle. It's going to last you four months. So or you can take the cheap stuff and it doesn't work and you stick it on the shelf. Yeah. Well, let me, let me ask you a little bit about yourself. So you actually are from, uh, you're from, let's see, Iowa? Yeah, I was born in Iowa in that kind of a smaller town environment. And then uh, I got my osteopathic from the Des Moines College. Uh, I was I wasn't interested in anything. I wanted to just do like, you know, slave labor stuff. And <laughs> and then some people that got near me said, "You're such a maniac about people shouldn't <laughs> eat sugar. People shouldn't eat white right, flour. Right. Why don't you become a doctor or something?" Okay. It took people to push me into it. Oh, I see. So and you then did I, that. I, I and it became a physician. Uh, and I found out that that was what I was geared to do by the Lord himself. Well, God has made my hands to be healing hands, I guess. Dr. Ingram, we've just run out of time, but I'm going to get back to you because let me, we can figure out a way for this to be something regular. But I More regular can't to help. thank yeah. you enough. It was a, okay. a stimulating environment, very stimulating discussion. Let's get, the, let's get people to the point where they feel good all the time. Okay, we're going to work on it. Thank you, Dr. Ingram, so much.